We now take you to Davos, Switzerland, where the World Economic Forum is underway, and one of the key topics is climate change. Our own Jim Cantori is there this morning. Jim. Hey, Mike. Yeah, it's been uh, certainly an interesting, interesting evening. Uh, last night we had uh, dinner with, with a lot of CEOs, uh, a lot of business people, and this one woman I met from a company called Thirst probably defined the world's water supply in the best way that I've ever heard it, and I wanted you to hear it. If you think about the world like an orange and the amount of water that's available in the world like an orange, it's only one small drop of juice that's actually the amount of water that we can use for human beings. And the reason that's the case is that most of it's locked up in glaciers or locked up in the ocean in a way that we can't use in an economic manner. So if you can imagine, we've just got that small drop of juice to deal with. Imagine uh, what a small, small country has a part of that little drop of juice. I want to bring in Michael Elliott, who's the CEO of a company called One. And you can read about this company on one.org, and I think you should because it's fascinating. Uh, Michael basically has, has helped through uh, the co his co-founder, Bono, and I know you know this guy. Uh, he's a grassroots advocacy and campaigning organization that fights extreme poverty and preventable disease, particularly in Africa. And uh, they have done some amazing things. I was just reading about 46.5 million children in school, 4 million Africans having access to life-saving AIDS, malaria deaths cut in half. That's a pretty amazing undertaking. Well, the world has made the world's made incredible progress in the last ten years, Jim. And it's not us that's done that. Many, many partners and many, many organisations have campaigned for the smart and effective assistance. But you which plug everybody led, in. Which we help. We help. Yeah. We help to plug people together. And one of the consequences of that has been that the last ten years have seen extraordinary gains in global health and global poverty. One of the things that we're doing here in Davos this week. All of us, all of the partners, all of those of us who work on these issues is to make sure that that progress continues. We've been working on these things called the Millennium Development Goals, which run out of 2015. We've got a thousand days to go. So we've got to keep all the effort on track so that we get money, so that we get assistance, so that we keep bringing down the number of people who die from preventable diseases and live lives in poverty, and we can really do it. Well, let me ask you this, switching gears a little bit. Do, do third world countries have a voice in climate change? Certainly. In fact, I was at a, I was at a session this morning where uh, the whole point of the, the extent to which climate change is going to affect uh, poorer countries came up. Uh, it's something you certainly hear uh, around at Davos sessions. You hear uh, people from poorer countries worrying about what climate change is going to do in terms of shifting populations, in terms of shifting uh, patterns of vegetation uh, and, uh, and agriculture and the like. So it's definitely an issue uh, that people talk about. Uh, and sure, I think, uh, I think poor countries, poorer countries, developing countries definitely make their voices heard on that. Do you find it more, you know, this more challenging now for the efforts that you've got and really seem to have ramped up on lately? No, I think, uh, I think I'm an optimist. I mean, I think uh, everyone knows that there are tough times in, in the rich world. Everyone knows that it's hard to find budgets that can go from the richer world to the more developed world. 